Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Welcome in, Rob Black and your money. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Let's talk what happened and what's happening on Wall Street. This is a show dedicated to get you to retirement, dedicated to get you financial planning, investment, insurance, advice and insights, hints and trips, tricks with your money to get you to retirement. Um, I'm wealthy. I created all my own wealth coming from a middle white class, lower middle white class background. I'm very lucky and um, I work hard and I get up early. A lot of good things go in my favor. Year to date, listen to this. The NASDAQ's up 21.8%. The S&P 500 up 9%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up just under 1%. So again, growth is beating growth and income. And growth and income is beating value, is the way I read that. Bitcoin, you know, I'll be honest with you. The Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 really isn't value. It's just a group of 30 stocks that some people believe are important to the economy. I don't find the index worth even commenting on other than everyone else does. NVIDIA is up 118% year to date, having a big run. I believe in a story with investments called TAM, Total Addressable Market. And in AI semiconductors right now, NVIDIA gets the TAM. AMD is going to have to try to catch up, which is good for AMD coming off a much smaller base. But there's just not a lot of players there. Where do I think NVIDIA can go? I think it's in a momentum mode. I do not think you can value it based on it being a growth stock. I own shares of NVIDIA and I bought them when they became highly dislocated and had a, a TAM or a business model that I appreciated. So last week we had a lot of talk about debt ceiling. Will we, will we not? Still have it. Last week the market was able to shrug off debt ceiling worries. The NASDAQ, filled with growth stocks, has been soaking up the attention, again, with valuations that are sky high. So when there's a correction, if we start talking recession, if we start talking debt ceiling, they're going to get hit probably the hardest. And by they, I mean the four horsemen, Meta, Alphabet, Microsoft, NVIDIA. They've all surged in 2023. They now account for 15% of the S&P 500's market cap, according to Barron's. Crunch time on debt ceiling. I think we have nine more days, in theory. And Biden cut short his trip into Asia, so he can come back and get negotiations going. I feel like it's all just a bunch of uh, publicity at this point in time. But maybe there'll be some meaningful cuts. One thing, whether you're Republican or Democrat, I'm pretty sure we could all agree on is the United States has a lot of debt. $31.4 trillion. It's a lot of money. And we're going to start playing with numbers in my lifetime. What's bigger than a trillion? Unless we, at some point in time we start looking at what we're spending versus what we're bringing in and, and get more of a balance. We had a surplus during the late 90s with the dot-com era. It's a shame we can hold on to that mentality. Let's move forward. Um, I want to remind you that stocks are not the only way to make money. There's another asset class like art, which is a little bit tougher to get your hands on. Stocks are a great asset class in my mind because it's easy to get your hands on owning publicly traded companies. There's digital currencies. There's there's other forms of making investments into assets. You can say bonds even. Um, I don't know. We don't have to talk about it. Zelensky was at the G7 big time. What's interesting to note about that is I think he stole the headlines. So we're not worried about 
the world economies. We're not worried about HIV. We're not worried about SARS or uh, COVID. We're worried as a nation, as a country, as a world about what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. And even though it's a war that's well publicized on YouTube and slightly on television, it doesn't feel like a war to me. That's a little bit weird. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein continues to be in the news. He uh, is reportedly, reportedly tried to blackmail Bill Gates over an affair. Uh, man, Gates, he went from super nerd Microsoft to super billionaire to bridge player hanging out with Warren Buffett to I never would have thought he would have got a divorce because Bill and Melinda Gates in the foundation to where he is now uh, being accused of having an affair with a bridge player, a Russian bridge player, bridge the card game, not like playing London bridges or something. I don't even know what that, that even means, but his name is being put in the news again. I will be honest with you. Um, I try to focus on money, uh, but there is some salacious headline news every now and then in money, near money, even though I know the story does not impact you and I, as far as I can tell. What else do we have? Brrr. I don't know. That's not worth it today. Uh, DeSantis, will he or won't he enter the race? It's coming up. I bring that up in large part because we will have a back and forth. As far as who's going to be president of the United States in the coming 12 to 14 months. What's interesting to note about that is how do you think candidates do for the stock market? How do you think candidates do for the economy? And that's probably as much as I could bring to it as I, as I will. And I, I don't get political on this show, even though at times I think you think you know, but I don't know if you do. And I don't know if you really think the right one on me. HBO Max is going to be named just Max starting tomorrow. They're adding a bunch of discovery content, Food Network, HGTV to the platform. If you're an HBO Max subscriber, you don't do anything other than complain about the dumb name. Disney is live action. Little Mermaid will be released on Friday. Will that move Pixar, uh, not Pixar stock? Excuse me, Disney stock. It's interesting because the Little Mermaid, it just wasn't my thing. And I think it was my little sister's. And it's when you're a big brother to a little sister, you're like, you kind of like buy into everything. And it, I just, it wasn't something I could buy into and I have no good feeling for it either way. So little mermaid is little mermaid and I move on what the NBA and the NHL playoffs continue getting kind of into crunch time. So we also have to start talking about what's happening today on wall street. It's really, to me, the debt ceiling show, if that makes sense, debt ceiling uncertainty contributes to the hesitation trade. You got the EU finding Facebook 1.2 billion euro for transferring EU user data to the United States. Meta is down not much on that news. Loop Capital downgraded Apple to hold, says that the company probably won't hit their phone numbers. Uh, number of phones sold this quarter. And Minneapolis Fed President Kashkari is telling CNBC that a decision to pause in June is a close call, but it's not the end of, of rate hikes. Big event coming up this week, Thursday in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge. Wealth preservation and tax planning in retirement. If you've never been, it's great for you. If you have over 500K, sign up today at Rob Black Show. It's robblackshow.com. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. The four things to note today. Treasury yields are rising. Minnesota, Minneapolis, not Minnesota, Minneapolis Fed. President Kashkari, he is a voter. He said in an interview on CNBC this morning that the decision on June is a close call, i.e. I think they're going to pause. Adding that if the Fed does skip, it does not mean the tightening cycle is over, thus creating a longer, higher interest rate speculation based on his words alone. There's relative strength from some mega cap names helping uh, the markets not feel worse than they would be. And there's uncertainty about the debt ceiling. 
And moving forward into some other headlines, Meta, aka Facebook's finding record 1.3 billion over EU user data transfers to the United States. Um, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google. What can you do in certain countries? What can you not? You need to play by their rules. Otherwise, you get fined. This is not something that changes my opinion on shares of, of Facebook. It is not. It, it is a material amount of much money. It's not a put them out of business type of money. It's eye catching at one point three billion. GM is going to introduce an all electric Cadillac Escalade IQ later this year. They've confirmed plans to introduce an all electric version of its flagship Cadillac Escalade. Detroit automaker said the new SUV will be called Escalade IQ. Escalade EV was expected. This company plans to fully convert Cadillac into an all electric brand by 2030. Uh, Still, Elon Musk has the lead in essentially all categories electric vehicle. Nacho phrase. I know you're saying, what did he just say? Nacho phrase. Why did he say not your phrase? Why did he say nacho? Because Taco Bell, listen to this crazy stuff. They filed a petition to put Taco John's longstanding trademark of Taco Tuesday back in the public domain. Did you know the phrase Taco Tuesday was owned by Taco Bell? That's crazy. But yes, yes, yes. And listen to this. This is so Taco Bell. They do everything right on a PR level, in my opinion. Um, They had a press release when they put the Taco Tuesday back in the public realm and took their patent off of it. I should go steal Taco Tuesday's patent at this point in time and sell it to everyone on Tuesdays that sell tacos. No. They said, restricting usage of the famous alliteration is like depriving the world of sunshine itself. Taco Bell knows how to release a press release. Let's talk about seeing is believing. Apple is expected to finally announce the release of its mixed reality headset in early June at its annual worldwide developers conference. Should you hold your breath or not? The announcement was rumored to be on the docket in 2020 and then again last year in January. The good thing is the longer it gets delayed, the more likely the worldwide web developers will have had their hands on the software or that the software will be uh, up again and again and again. There's some really good world creation software out from NVIDIA and from, I think it's called Unify. And those two world creators, if you will, um, power of virtual reality and augmented reality at this point in time. Apple is expected to finally release some new software so that we can start creating worlds and maybe be on sale in later this year. Here's where I here's how I think this is going to play out at this point in time. If they release, and I think it would be wise to consider not releasing, but that's just me. If they release in the fall you're probably going to see a very expensive pro version of the headset and not something for the consumer. And they're going to say, this isn't really for the consumer. This is for the pro. This is for the developer. This is for the colleges, for the high schools that have a technical bit, uh, technology bin to them. If all of that is true, um, I think it'll be a disappointment to the stock. Year two, three, four is where we'll see if it will be an addition to the stock. As prices come down, features get flushed out, and an app two, three, four becomes must must need. The biggest problem with the augmented virtual reality headset that's coming is that it's going to use a battery pack. So you know how you have those brick chargers? I call them power bricks. I'm not sure what you call them. Um, you're going to need to have one of those in your like pocket. So the expected unveiling comes at a challenging time in the AR VR market. Global shipments of augmented virtual uh, augmented reality virtual reality headsets declined in 2022. User penetration of AR VR is under two percent. 
Most employees are not interested in using it in the workplace. We're just having a tough enough time getting people back to work. At the same time, the gaming industry is flourishing. In 2023, AR, VR headset shipments are expected to tick up by 14% thanks to Sony. Right now, Meta's Quest headset dominates the somewhat sparse competitive landscape, but Apple doesn't want to be left behind. A combination of strong consumer trust and immense content ecosystem could position Apple well. Um, because it's got ambitious, ambitious uh, plans. So seeing will be believing. And I only bring up this story again because we're about two weeks away from talking about it. Let's take a look at some of the headlines that are out there. Uh, already got that one pretty well beat up. JP Morgan Chase raises key revenue. Target to $84 billion after their takeover of First Republic. Jamie Dimon catches a little heat from insiders that he's the best banker and Wall Street knows he's the best banker and Washington knows he's the best banker. And therefore, he gets preferential treatment, like whatever he says goes. So the guidance given in April um, has been revised due to the fact that J.P. Morgan raised its net interest income outlook by about $7 billion. One. So it's going to be a deal that works for J.P. Morgan. And the rich get richer. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Got a big event coming up this Thursday, 6.30 to 8.30. It is going to be in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge, great parking. It's a long drive for me, but that's okay. Um, Palo Alto, Elks Lodge, May 25th. We have a few spots left. 30. Pretty filled up. It's pretty nice. Income is a both crucial and often overwhelming area of retirement planning. I'm really focused on income and retirement, so I'm going to be there listening to CFP Chad Burton talk about minimizing taxes, optimal social security strategies, how to pull money out, how to allocate money so that you don't get caught in a down market, and much, much more. You can sign up online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. It's Elks Lodge, Thursday, May 25th, 6.30, day 30, robblackshow.com. Don't want to work forever? Check out the Retirement Planning Guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Let's talk a little financial planning, get a little strategy going. Hiring a financial planner will re up your results by about two times over a 20 year period, according to research. Um, I have a financial planner. It is something that I did not expect to have in my 20s and my 30s. In my 40s, I started seeing the value of it. In the 50s, it's become invaluable. It's 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 worth it's worth talking about. A certified financial planner is the accreditation that I like. I don't like just being a broker. I don't like investment advisors. I don't like investment specialists. I don't like many names that are out there. The one accreditation, and you have to put a little patent pending registered trademark behind the thing is the you know the r in the circle certified financial planner designation um you can make a mistake hiring cfps though and here's some things i recommend to do when you're thinking about using a financial professional find out what services they have if you're just there for money management it's not a good fit for you probably because there's ets and index funds that can do that as well can they do your taxes can they help with the preparation of your taxes? Managing my tax liability. I'm not doing anything illegal, but could potentially save tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars in an investment lifetime. The real estate investment analysis. If you own a property in California, you're probably not cash flowing as well as you think you are. For every million dollars, you should be pulling in $40,000 of income. And that's after you pay a mortgage, if you're carrying a mortgage. 
Otherwise, if you have a million dollars invested in a home, a million dollars equity, and it's only pulling in 20,000 a year to 1,000 or 5,000, yeah, you might be getting the capital appreciation on, on the asset as well, but you're not cash flowing as you could with that 1 million in equity elsewhere. How an analysis helps. Charitable planning. It's, um, I honestly have too much money to live till the day I die. I honestly have too much money to leave to my kids without causing them, how shall we say that, you know, trust fund baby thing. Again, we can come along with like 10 bad years on the stock market. I, I wouldn't be talking as big as I'm talking. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to show. I honestly need to learn a lot about Medicare planning in the coming years. My CFP will help me. Uh, my estate plan review and attorney partnership, my insurance review. There's a lot of things that CFPs can help you with. Social security analysis, home affordability, um, debt analysis, pension analysis. So if you're just using CFPs for investments, I get it. They're probably similar to an exchange traded fund or an index fund. Now, what else can I tell you about an advisor? Um, here's some mistakes that people make when it comes to hiring an advisor. You want to make sure that they are a fiduciary. So that CFP with that little registration uh, circle behind it, that means they are a fiduciary and they must avoid conflicts of interest. They're not allowed to put you in product that gets them high fees and high commissions just because. Never hire the first person you meet. Ask if they have a specialty because CFPs do. You've heard on this show, me interview a female CFP who specializes in widows. Would I put her with a 45 year old couple? No, unless it's a 45 year old widow. Would I put her with a 55 year old? Probably I could, you could break both ways for sure. But if there's a specialty, try to figure that out. See if they work with people that look like you and act like you. And by look, I'm saying profile. Um, ask for credentials. Did they get the Series 65, Series 66, Series 7 test, financial tests? Um, so you want to vet someone as well. So in the CFP industry, they've got what are called ADVs. And you can read about their background. You can read about their legal exposures. In the past, have they ever messed something up so much that uh, you know there's our arbitration? I think it's really, really good to think about a CFP, know that I use a CFP, and know that I I, I use many of the services. For instance, I just got into a alternative income fund that isn't publicly traded. So it's lending money to businesses and it's charging higher returns. You know, it's been historically is not a good predictor, but it's it's yield has been about 9% in the last 14 months. So that's not too shabby. Um, and it's a unique product in the sense that it pays monthly, not 9% a month, but 9% divided by 12 per month. In that ballpark, that's not exactly how it's figured. You get the idea. Um, you can ask an advisor questions, and I, I think it's always important to. I want to give money to my sons. How much money can I give away without incurring a tax issue with the IRS? Uh, if you have a son, in this case, I have two sons, you can give each 17000 without having to deal with the IRS. But even if you give more, you won't have to pay any taxes right now. In fact, unless you surpass the lifetime limit, which is currently $12 million, you won't have to pay any gift taxes. But you have to know how to file that on your taxes. A gift tax is a federal tax that may be imposed when you give someone property or money, and they don't give you something of equal value in return. Um, I'm going to be goofing off in retirement of gifting money to my children so I don't have to pay taxes on the assets when I sell them. I can reset their tax basis. So, for instance, I own Apple, and I've owned it since the 1990s, late 90s. Um, so it's a highly concentrated position for me. Instead of me selling it to pay the bills I could and pay taxes on it, I could gift it to my child at fair value. Uh, it'll reset to a new cost basis for them. There's a lot of ways you can avoid paying taxes that are illegal. That I, I'm not going to be the kind of guy to move to Texas just to move to Texas. 
You know, I'm not going to do that just so I can avoid taxes. I need to want to go there, but I get why people do. Some types of gifts are tax free and never count towards lifetime limit. Those include charitable donations, political contributions, gifts to spouses, gifts to dependents, medical expenses, tuition payments. Um, I think you could kind of see where it gets really not juggling, but a lot of information on financial advisors and how much um, you can and can't. So again, just the, the way I'm tax planning with some of my stock options, uh, not stock options, but stocks. Stock options are great to financially plan with too, just so you know. If you work at Rivian or you work at Tesla and you have stock options, do not just run to the door and sell them. Figure out how to effectively alter your decision to consider other options, to consider other ways taxes break onto you and your obligation. So I have no problem paying for a financial advisor, uh, CFP accreditation only. I throw that down in large part because I, I, there's things that you want. Like, I don't want to pay a, uh, a banker to be a broker. I don't want to pay a broker to be an insurance person. I don't like if you have an insurance agent, your neighbor's an insurance guy. He goes, hey, Bob, I see that you just had a baby. Don't you want to plan for his college? That insurance agent's probably going to put your kid in, into some sort of product that generates him, the insurance guy, a commission. Because that's how commission the insurance people make a living. I like the CFP model much, much more attractive as long as they're active. Uh, you can't have someone you know, take a look at you and just turn it into portfolio management. It has to be an active relationship because your money is important. The Federal Reserve Board has issued Economic Well-Being of the United States Households Report. I love reports like this. Any sort of academic paper that comes out of the Federal Reserve, I think is worth a read. So if you go to federalreserve.gov, federalreserve.gov, you can take a look at some of their regulations, some of their monetary policies, some of their uh, payment systems, uh, explorations, what their thoughts are on digital currencies. It's government and it's informative. Unbelievably, in my opinion. In this report, it discusses the findings related to financial well-being, income, expensive employment, banking and credit. The report indicates that self-reported financial well-being declined in 2022, in part reflecting ongoing concerns about higher prices. In the fourth quarter of 2022, 73% of adults reported either doing okay or living comfortably financially. That was down five percentage points from the previous year and amongst the lowest levels observed since 2016. The number is moving lower, and it's showing us that we're starting to get nervous again. Or our bills not starting to, how shall we say, um, line up with our expenses and our income. Parents uh, living with children under age 18, black adults, Hispanic adults, and those with a disability were more likely to say that their budgets had been affected a lot by higher prices. 54% of adults said that their budgets had been affected a lot by price increases. But if you're in a minority, i.e. black, Hispanic, or with a disability... Uh, the number shoots up even higher. What, when you can get your hands on research, try to. There's a lot of information at census.gov, federalreserve.gov, lots and lots of information. There's If you have a brokerage account with Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab or TD Ameritrade, if you log in online, there's a lot of research on the stock market, on the economy, and much, much more. Use the information that's out there, and your library has a lot of this information as well. Big event coming up Thursday, May 25th, Thursday evening, 6.30 to 8.30. CFP, Chad Burton, and I are going to be going over financial conditions with wealth preservation and income retirement. Income in retirement. Sign up at Rob Black's show. That's this Thursday, the 25th. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. I read research reports on a regular basis as if it's my diet. Finding new research analyst is super important. I have Google Alerts set up anytime any research article is written, anytime uh, this analyst is quoted at CNBC or Barron's or uh, Bloomberg. 
I want to know because I want to say this person's important to me to the point that I want to consume what they're saying, or at least I want to hear it. So the tough thing is finding younger CEOs and um, younger analysts to replace the older ones. Because to me, um, I like Dan Niles, for instance, as a tech investor. Um, he was really, really important to me in the 1990s. What he had to say was pretty cool. As he's aged, I think he's become a little more cynical. And optimism works a lot better, in my opinion, on Wall Street than cynicism. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't get cynical and say, at what point of price is Amazon or NVIDIA or Apple or Google? At what point are they too expensive? But... It's always important to find someone on the move who's younger. Alex Perry, he's 30 years old, out of Bank of America. Um, his father set him up with one share of Home Depot when he was like 10 years old. So he started having a little mini portfolio. I love stories like that. He is fantastic. Anything he has to say on leisure brands, I think he's he's hitting the pulse. Uh, geolocation, web traffic, point of sales data, all good stuff. Brooke Roach, 31 years old, out of Goldman Sachs. Her opinions on apparel and accessories. She hits Levi's, Lulim, and Warby Parker. Gap. I like her research process. And anytime she speaks, I want to hear it. Bert Subin, he's 31 years old, out of Stifle. He talks about trucking and logistics industries. I can't follow everything. I have to count on analysts to feed my brain. He'll compare baseball game attendance in the United States during and after World War II, gain insight on how people would respond to the end of worldwide traumatic events. It's pretty hardcore stuff, the way his college career unfolded. One of the quotes in one of his recent reports was more people were going to Red Sox and Yankee games in greater amounts after World War II. And what does that tell us about people's proclivity to spend on experience travel, even though we're in different times? Um, he talks about the psychological impact of what the shopper is going to look like post COVID. And pretty much so anything that he writes in logistics and trucking, it's gospel to me on exploring how we're moving people around to where we're moving them around and where they're spending money in that process. I will be honest with you. Biotech is an area that I do not focus much on ever, even in my research. But if there's a report that's out by Brian Ching out of JP Morgan, um, I'll read it. Um, he gives me the drug information, the historical background. He looks at the inherent risks of the trials going on. You'll see what others are missing in the data. So whether it's Intellia Therapeutics or Protagonist Therapeutics, Royvent Sciences, companies that you and I are way too busy to follow, it's okay to find analysts that are good at them. And I have a whole list. Um, and it's, it's constantly, it's expensive. But I find it to be inviolable. One of the areas of tech that I really hold dear to my heart is software. And again, in technology, you have hardware, software. You've got semiconductors. You, 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 you can start breaking it down, right? So one software analyst that I like is a guy named Jackson Adler. He's out of Moffat Nathanson. Uh, he covers Intuit, DocuSign, LegalZoom, Paycom, Workday, Asana, MailChimp. Credit Karma, QuickBooks. Um, he, he knows the brands and he talks about them and how they work into our lives. Um, if there's an area that I want to do a show on, like sustainable energy, I'll look up an analyst in my, my book. Uh, and I'll prep for a show maybe on Friday, I'll do sustainable energy and I'll go to TD Cohen and I'll, I'll get some research. The energy sector has been out of favor. But how about alternative energy? I think to cover energy, you also have to cover alternative energy. 
and see what's going on out there in the refining and marketing businesses. See what's going on out there with Russia and war in Ukraine. Uh, see what the big players like Exxon, Chevron, Marathon Petroleum, and you know a dozen other oil companies are playing. What their plans are on oil. It's really important that you have more tools than just me because I have a lot of tools that I'm drawing on. And you may want to talk internet where I'm like, ah, I've got enough wealth. And that week or that month, that year, I, I abuse internet and I don't cover it a lot. Um, a good internet al- analyst, Robert Mullins, um, he's with Gordon Hassett. He's currently covering names like Airbnb, Uber, DoorDash, Redfin, Zillow, and more. Now, I'm a big fan of following trends, and he spotted a, a trend in Lyft, growing driver supply, higher ride conversion rates, employees returning to the office. He upgrades the stock, boom, next thing you know, it's up 50%. So he's collecting data on, like I said, some of the most, not most important but companies that impact our lives. It's companies that we talk about on the show, like Uber and Airbnb and DoorDash. Um, at one point in time, oops, I just hit my microphone. Bad Robert, bad Robert. You would think that was my name. Um, people say it so often. But at one point in time, people thought the real estate agent was going to go out of business because Redfin was changing that model aggressively lowering the commissions anyhow big event coming up thursday evening may 25th in palo alto it's about wealth strategies and income execution plans in retirement you can sign up for the event if you haven't been before sign up at rob black show it's rob black show.com big event thursday night retirement planning is more complicated than ever and it can be hard to even know where to begin so set aside thursday evening may 25th and get ready to learn some strategies from chad burton and rob black that can help you retire better and pass on your estate while minimizing taxes that's may 25th at the elks lodge in palo alto this event will focus on retirement income and tax planning. If you're nearing or are in retirement and have at least 500000 in investable assets, this seminar is for you. Chad will explain how to transition your portfolio from the accumulation phase to the income phase, which accounts to draw from first, how to protect your estate from long-term care costs, and much more. Learn how to invest during high inflation and interest rate moves, social security strategies, and managing IRAs and 401ks in retirement. Rob Black will share market happenings and trends. That's Thursday, May 25th, 6.30 p.m. at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. Sign up for the event at chadburton.com. For KDOW listeners, we'll waive the sign-up fee. chadburton.com.